So, if we are going to heal on the level of spirit, it's very important to know about the Bindu. Uh, the Bindu is a Vedic concept and it is seen as a point of non-duality, uh, like a seed, the origin out of which everything emanates. So in the Western philosophy it would be very similar to the soul, uh, which is also a non-dualistic core from which everything flows. It is possible in astral traveling or in elevating the consciousness to find this Bindu state. And it's actually in this Bindu state that we are best able to perform healings on a spirit level. Because all the duality disappears. There is no difference between the path of light, the path of darkness. There is no right, there is no wrong, there is no duality, there is no male, there is no female. Uh, so you really leave behind all the archetypes and all the lower astral things which might interfere and go really to the source. And out of this source, the proper archetypes, the proper systems can flow. So in a way, you have on the one hand the current situation, like what is the spirit like now, and they're trapped within their race, in their archetype, in their role models. And we have the Bindu, out of which a more perfect manifestation can flow, which also will ultimately create uh, a race, archetypes, um, sex role models, age role models, uh, cultural role models. But these role models are actually based upon the desire of the soul, the essence of the soul, rather than the whole historical flow uh, which is being carried forward by ancestors, by past lives, by other things. So working with the Bindu really can give you a blueprint of perfection. What is it exactly that we're striving towards? What is the perfect situation? And of course the perfect situation won't manifest. It cannot manifest, because we live in a world of compromise, we live in a world where things have limits, where they require time, where they require energy, where they require the right circumstances. But working with the Bindu can give you kind of a goal, the, a blueprint, a lighthouse on the horizon, which allows you to navigate, to be guided toward that. Because if we start creating our goals from down here, we will be projecting our hopes, our fears, our own cultural paradigms on the path, and we don't want to do that. So it's necessary to go in quite deep meditation um, and increase your consciousness, allow yourself to move up and up and up. So first let go of your thoughts, your mind, your history, your plans, your memories of the past, your plans for the future and then start to let go of all your other identifications as being part of the culture, as being of a certain sex, of a certain species and ultimately also of your purpose in this incarnation. You're not here to be a trader, a warrior, a worker or a sage. These are all things which are on a lower level not on the Bindu level, because on the Bindu level you are everything and nothing at the same time. <laughs> and reaching the Bindu state is a process of detachment. If we let go of everything, then ultimately only the seed remains. It can help to be very ascetic, to not eat and drink for a while, and to have nothing around you of silence around you and often after you've done that for like four days it much becomes much easier to reach a Bindu state. Um, if you're going to try to reach it through meditation the typical place to focus on is the back of the head and modern uh, mystics prefer to focus on the pineal gland which is in the center of the head. Um, I have tried focusing on either um, my personal preference is to focus on the back of the head 
rather than in the center of the head. Um, maybe it's because I'm a traditionalist, you can try both methods. Um, I find that focusing on the center of the head produces a much more illusionary, illusionary experience where you do get into a state of unity but ultimately it is not a true state of unity, it is just an astral concept of that state of unity and you're still trapped within your own cosmos which allows, so you're in a way going in a very neutral state but you're also cut off from everything else and if I use the back of my head to focus on I can also go into this Bindu state of unity but it allows me to relate to everything around me so this is a much more tantric experience where you can really feel and see the essence of things and relate to them from spirit to spirit, from soul to soul um, without being clouded by all your desires or by all your fears you can have a real contact from the Bindu state so, but let's not forget why we're doing this, because from the Bingo state it's very easy to drift into it and just stay there for hours and hours and hours and enjoy being free of all desires. But ultimately we have to hold on to one desire, and that is namely that we are there to heal our client, and to serve their spirit by allowing the spirit to transform their body. So, in an ideal case, the spirit has control over the body. It has been blessed by the first uh, two messiahs of light, so that the spirit will have the strength, will have also the, uh, the concept uh, of unity, of balance, of harmony. Uh, it will understand and work with all the archetypes, and from the third messiah it will get the knowledge of how to work with all the different powers and all the elements in the world so it doesn't pick up any pollutions and it doesn't become twisted. But unfortunately none of us are very perfect students and it is very likely that we've failed in learning from all these different messiahs so sometimes the spirit needs to be helped to become more strong, more resilient because the spirit itself will become infected by all the events which happen to it um, it can also lose its path or just be dumbfounded as to how to change things. And if we can bring these impulse of the first three messiahs of light to that spirit, often the spirit is able to heal its own body. Um, if not, then we can ask for help from these first three messiahs. And through their blessings and their guidance we are able to act and to help with healing the person. Um, there's another video about the four messiahs of light and how to interact with them and um, you can also do a ritual to summon them. There are recordings of that um, and this can be a very nice way to set up your healing space as well to ask for them to come into your space and to work with you on helping people to move along the path. So, this concludes the theoretical part about how to prepare for the healing. And the next part will be about the common problems and the location of the air meridian.